Introducing Turk's IP69K rated managed switches for industrial ethernet. Now there is a faster, more secure, and more rugged solution than ever before to manage network performance and process control. An ethernet switch works as a central location for wired network devices on a wired ethernet network to communicate with each other. In an industrial environment, wired networks are typically preferred over wireless due to its reliability, speed, and consistency. Ethernet switches typically come in unmanaged or managed varieties. Unmanaged switches are devices that are not considered intelligent because it does not filter any data or have any intelligence as to where the data is supposed to be sent. Managed Ethernet switches, like the new TBNL Ethernet switch, on the other hand, can be configured to adjust speeds, collect users into subgroups, configure security features, and monitor and report traffic and network activity. At a high level, the TBNL Ethernet switch is a 10 port managed switch. Eight of the ports are standard 10100 ports, and two of the bottom ports are going to be 1 gig Xcode ports. The switches also have a 4 or 5 pin 7 8 inch mini fast power supply connector. The switches are very rugged with an IP69K rating and a negative 40 to 70 degrees Celsius temperature rating. Some powerful features of the new Ethernet switch are network load monitoring, line diagnostics, RSTP media redundancy, NAT routing, firewalling. In this video, we're going to dive in and show you some of the key features of the new TBNL managed Ethernet switch from Turk. Let's first take a look at some of the diagnostic features of the new Ethernet switch. First, let's provide power to the switch and then connect the Ethernet switch to your PC using an Ethernet cord tip. Now, let's open Turk Service Tool and click the search button. The Ethernet switch will show up in the Turk Service Tool and you'll be able to see the IP address of the switch. You can then bring up the web server by double clicking on the IP address. You will find that the web server is password protected. The default username is admin and the password is password. However, we typically recommend changing the username and password for security purposes. We now have access to the web server of the Ethernet switch. Right off the bat, we can access a lot of information. We have access to the MAC address of the ports. We have device info such as part number, ID number, and firmware version. And we also have access to our features, which show some of the key settings of the Ethernet switch. If we go to monitoring, we have the counters tab. So watch this. You can set this up as a real-time counter by clicking real-time. In here, you can see the number of unicast packets, the network load of each port. Now watch this. You will notice that it says double-click cells to include in graph. So if we double-click on one of these cells and then click graph, you will actually see a real-time graph of that value. We can also access line diagnostics under maintenance by clicking cable diagnostics. Here we can choose which interfaces we would like to cable diagnose. The Ethernet cord set connected to this Ethernet switch is on port 1. Click Start Cable Diagnostics. With this feature, cable breaks in the network are detected and localized wire by wire. We can now drop down and we can see that our two Ethernet pairs on this port have resulted in OK and we have zero distance. Under maintenance, we can also add users if we click users. Here we can add users with certain authorization levels, with levels 0, 1, and 2, with level 0 being full configuration allowed, level 1 being partial configuration allowed, and level 2 being read only. For anyone that may be frustrated with IP addresses, there is NAT routing. When you have traffic coming into a port, a NAT router can send it to another port for a destination with a different IP address. On the web server, under Configuration, click NAT. Here, you can enable IP forwarding and create rules. The Ethernet Switch's web server offers ease and flexibility from the web server for NAT routing. 
Another feature well suited for anyone that may be frustrated with IP addresses is port-based IP address allocation. With this feature, you can take a device and plug it into the switch and set the IP address for the new device directly from the web server of the Ethernet switch. In this case, we have a TBEN L4-16 DXP plugged into port 4 on the Ethernet switch. Click on DHCP in the web server and go to Interface-Based IP Assignment. If we go to port 4, we can quickly set the IP address for the newly connected TBEN L4-16 DXP by clicking Set. In this case, I'm setting the IP address to be 192.168.1.25. If we go to Turk Service Tool to check, we will now see that the IP address for the TBEN L4 16 DXP is now set to 192.168.1.25. One big reason this is such a powerful feature is for device replacement. If a device is damaged and needs to be replaced, you can simply replace the device and the IP address is automatically assigned. This will help cut down on downtimes and troubleshooting. To learn more about Turk's Ethernet switch, please review the manual which can be found on Turk's website. Thanks for watching.